Thank you so much for having me and for this opportunity to talk about super complex mapping. Hopefully you can now see my slides. I will assume you, okay, I can see the screen, so I know you can see them. So just to get us all on the same page, and, and Nika will do a much better job of providing more context about what this means uh, in his next presentation after mine, but we like to think about complex mappings as a mapping that involves more than two entities. For example, cheese and sandwich, when we really want to map cheese sandwich. And this is a very simple initial explanation, but this is what we like to say is sort of the foundation of what we mean when, when we're talking about a complex mapping. And since the examples today will be presented from OMOP to OBO, and I have to shamelessly plug it, I just want to give you a very quick and dirty overview of, of what it means so that when we dive into these examples, you'll have some underlying context of where these complex mappings come from. So OMOP to OBO at a high level is just a framework that allows us to map concepts from the OMOP common data model to different OBO foundry ontologies. We tried really hard to make this mapping very sound in terms of tracking provenance, being really specific in how a mapping is created, the ways that things identify and align up together. And then this is tracked through an algorithm that looks at different ways to create mappings and then outputs mappings again with solid provenance. So that's all I'll say about that, just to give you the purview. Again, the goal is to take concepts from the OMOP common data model and map them to an OBO foundry ontology. And the, the rest of my presentation today will be will be quick, but it's just designed to get you familiar with what we mean by complex mappings by giving you five different examples of what a complex mapping in the biomedical domain, specifically applied to healthcare data and patient data might look like. So example one, what if we wanted to map the concept acute astropia? Well, we definitely wanna cover the concept astropia, but we also need to have acute and to do this, we need to say that acute is modifying the concept of astropia. And then within the OMOP to OBO framework, we want to give you mapping evidence. So as a user of these mappings, you can determine how useful they might be that lets you know exactly how that mapping was created. So in this case, we have database cross-references on the OMOP side that align to different cross-references on the OBO foundry ontology side. In this case, we're looking at the HPO. So we have concepts that align on the SNOMED concept and also on a UMLS CUI. We also have string matches to one part of this mapping and it's an exact map to the concept astropia. And we also use things like bag of words and embedding models, which help us again, find different mappings to part of this concept, in this case, astropia. And then there's some manual curation required, which covers acute. So when I say we track provenance, we're tracking every bit of the evidence that led us from a starting with a concept, in this case, acute astropia, to ending with two HPO concepts, acute, which modifies the original concept, astropia. Example two, how do we map the concept cyto sideroblastic anemia? So in this case, a mapping might align on synonyms, and in this case, we'll show you two different synonyms we align on. So we align on refractory cytoblastic anemia, as well as cytoblastic Sideroblastic anemia, apologies for butchering the names. And because we map two synonyms with equal likelihood, we say it's or. And the or here matters because of how we might want to represent this mapping in terms of owl expressivity. And again, we have evidence to support this. So we aligned on database cross, cross <laughs> sorry, cross references, just like with the prior concept. We had two exact string matches to both concepts. And we also had a perfect score when we're thinking about cosine similarity between our bag of word embeddings to both concepts. So really solid evidence to support both of these concepts. In example three, and Nico gave you a wonderful preview to this in his prior slides, hypertensive heart disease without congestive heart failure. So we have hypertensive heart disease, we have congestive heart failure, and we wanna make sure that when we create this mapping, we're saying hypotensive heart disease and not congestive heart failure. And similar types of evidence to support this mapping, again, with different degrees of confidence as suggested by the score or by the different levels of, of mapping at either a database cross-reference or a string alignment. So just to give you a sense here, there are, when we initially said cheese sandwich, we were being very simple for talking about a complex mapping, which is a bit ironic. In this case, we're trying to give you a taste of 
concept, complex mappings are very difficult to represent when we think about system and how we might want to leverage this really powerful framework for representing standardized bits and pieces of a mapping when you have really complex bits and pieces to put in those slots. Okay, last two examples, and I promise I'm handing it back to Nico. So chronic deep venous thrombosis of right calf. So as you might expect, we're gonna have chronic modifying deep venous thrombosis and right abnormality of the calf, in this case, right modifying abnormality of the calf. Same exact types of evidence to support this. We just really wanna impress upon you when we are using this framework we're not just saying, trust us, we've mapped this as best we could. We're saying, trust us, we've mapped this as best we could, but here's how we did it. And final mapping to give you one of the more difficult ways of representing a very complex concept. Say we have the concept acute duodenal ulcer without hemorrhage and without perforation, but with obstruction. So acute duodenal ulcer, so acute modifying the ulcer concept, gastrointestinal obstruction, so acute, and this obstruction. And then we have not small intestine perforation and not gastrointestinal hemorrhage. And we wanna bring them all together by saying, and. So just again, to, to really impress upon you that mappings can be simple in terms of how complex they are, but they can also be complex squared, if you will, for how quickly they get very, very detailed and very specific by elaborating with different modifiers. And this really press upon, press upon us the need of needing something very expressive to represent them. And again, just one last slide here to show you the, the level of evidence that supports this mapping. And before I lose anyone, because we've gone really deep in complex mappings, I will cut it off here and take questions or hand it back to Nico. Thank you very much, Tiffany. Anyone here uh, wants to ask a question before we move over to solutions? Sue? Thank you. Um, so the first thing that jumped to my mind as I'm looking at this is logical definitions and or EQ statements in ontologies and kind of wondering how you see this relating and, and you know how this would work with you know, the, that sort of formal logical definitions. Thank you so much. That is a great question and, and something that Nico and I have recently been talking about, but also something I've, I've dove in deeply with Nicole Vasilevsky on is how to, so you say you have these complex mappings, how do you actually make them useful for people? And, and why this matters for your question is that I think the only real way to make them truly useful is to create formal logical definitions within whatever ontology you're extending at least that's my initial gut reaction to wanting to use them. And it's it's not, I think there are automated ways we could do that within this framework, but I don't think it's it's trivial or, or easy in any way, shape or form. So I don't know if I fully answered your question, but I, I totally agree with you. We need logical definitions. And I think the best way to do that is to start by extending the initial ontology you're mapping to or ontologies. <laughs> 